The new Lenovo Legion 7 gaming laptop offers some excellent improvements over last year's model, but it's not perfect. There's still at least one major issue that you need to know about. So let's see what changes have been made in this detailed review. The first change is the move over to AMD's Ryzen 5000 processors. I've got the highest spec configuration here with full powered Nvidia RTX 3080 graphics and 32 gigs of memory, but it is also available with lower specs too. You can find examples and updated prices with the links down in the description. Oh, and the Legion 5 Pro also just arrived, so make sure you're subscribed for the review on that one. Overall build quality feels nice. Both the top and bottom panels are aluminum, while the interior seems to be a hard grey plastic. No sharp corners or edges. The laptop alone weighs 2.5 kilos or 5.5 pounds, then about a kilo or 2.3 pounds heavier with the large 300 watt power brick and cables. The dimensions really aren't too different compared to most 15 inch laptops. And that's because of the unique screen. It's 16 inches with a 165Hz refresh rate, but it's it's using a 16 by 10 aspect ratio with a resolution above standard 1440p. This means that there's more pixels compared to your traditional 16 by 9 screen. There's more space vertically, so basically they're able to fit a bigger panel inside a 15 inch size machine. It gets quite bright at full brightness, over 500 nits, however this drops off sharply as you lower it. The Lenovo Vantage software, the control panel for the laptop, lets you enable or disable Optimus, aka hybrid mode. With Optimus enabled, the screen still has free sync, and with Optimus disabled, you've instead got the option of G-Sync, so best of both worlds however you run it. The Vantage software gives you the option to enable or disable panel overdrive, which affects screen response time. By default, mine was set to off, but you can turn it on with one click to improve average greater gray response time to around 4.4 milliseconds, which is quite nice when compared to other laptops, below the 6 milliseconds for transitions to occur within the refresh window. I wouldn't say there was any backlight bleed in my unit. The small imperfections were never noticeable in practice, but this will vary between laptops. There's a 720p camera above the screen in the middle, no Windows Hello support though. There wasn't room for a privacy shutter over the camera due to the bigger screen and thinner bezels, so there's instead a switch on the right which physically disconnects the camera. This is what the camera and microphone look and sound like, and here's what it sounds like to type on the keyboard. The Legion 7 is also the first laptop to offer Toby Horizon support. Basically, it's able to track your head movement with the camera. And in supported games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, actions like trying to look around the corner will actually affect the game. You can of course turn it off if you prefer. I have actually been playing a lot of Assassin's Creed lately, and I have noticed that while sneaking up on enemies, I do do the try to look around corner with my head thing without even realizing, so there is some merit to this idea. The keyboard has per-key RGB lighting, and all keys and secondary functions are illuminated. It's got three levels of brightness which can be adjusted with function and the up and down arrows. I liked typing on it, it feels similar to others from Lenovo, so a nice subtle clicky feel. That said, my partner didn't like typing on it. She thought that it was too much effort to type anything and you had to press harder than usual to get the keys to actually trigger. But that wasn't my experience, so your mileage may vary. The lighting is controlled with the Corsair IQ software. Now there's a lot to discuss with the keyboard and lighting. By default, you can hold function and press the spacebar to cycle through five built-in effects or turn it all off as the sixth option. These effects are part of the firmware, so they could change with updates. This means when you power on the laptop, it will remember what you've set the keyboard to and show the effect without any software running. A lot of people asked me about this because last year's model would just spew RGB by default until the IQ software loaded in Windows and applied your changes. But now you can change the effect or even turn it off completely without software. If you customize it with the IQ software though, the default firmware lighting will be in effect during boot until Windows and the IQ software loads and overwrites it. IQ takes priority once loaded. This seems to lead to other issues. With an IQ effect in place, using function plus spacebar no longer works unless you remove the IQ effect or or close the IQ software and go back to the built-in effects. There's also a light bar that runs along some of the left, right, and front sides, as well as lighting in all four air vents and lighting in the letter O on the lid, all of which can be customized through the IQ software. You can also turn off the lid light with function plus L, but again, only if you're using the default built-in effect rather than IQ. With a custom effect on, this does not work currently. One of the LEDs in my light bar appears to be stuck regardless of what colors I set. It's only really obvious if it's in contrast to the other colors with an RGB effect, I can't notice it. But then if I set all lights to red, or black, so off, it becomes apparent. This isn't just my unit either, as a Legion 7 customer emailed me with the same problem. Hopefully it's just a software issue that can be patched. The Legion 7 has already had at least one keyboard firmware update during my testing, and that fixed a different issue that I had. So it's definitely possible that any of the lighting behavior discussed previously could change with a future update. Lenovo says that the glass precision touchpad is 23% larger than last year's model, and it's certainly bigger. 
It clicks down anywhere, was nice to use, and unlike the previous generation, the touchpad doesn't flex below the chassis when pushed down on. The older model left a gap. On the left from the back there's an air exhaust fan, USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port with DisplayPort 1.4 support and 3.5mm audio combo jack. The right just has the camera disconnect switch, another Type-C port though this one is 3.2 Gen 1, and there's an air exhaust vent on this side too. The rest is on the back, between the two air vents on the corners from left to right there's Gigabit Ethernet, USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port, again with DisplayPort 1.4 like the one on the left, but this one also lets you charge the laptop. Otherwise there are three USB USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports, HDMI 2.1 output, and power input on the far right. There are icons above the rear ports that light up so you can easily see where you're plugging into when sitting in front of the laptop, no need to turn it around. And you can optionally turn these lights off with the function and U shortcut, a nice touch. The power LED is white between 91% and 100% charge, otherwise amber means 90% or below. Both the left and back Type-C ports with DisplayPort support and HDMI connect directly to the NVIDIA discrete graphics, which makes sense given we have the option of disabling Optimus anyway. The front has a little section that sticks out in the middle, which makes it very easy to open up, and the screen goes the full 180 degrees back for sharing. The plastic interior feels nice and smooth, so easy to clean off any dirt and fingerprints. The hinge is an area that a lot of people asked me to cover. And Lenovo have confirmed that there are more reinforcements between the hinge and the top lid in this generation. The Lenovo parts website provides photos, here's last year's 7i, and basically it appears that this metal section is stuck to the lid without further reinforcement, which seems to be what led to problems that many users have reported online. This is the new 2021 model, it's hard to see exactly what's going on with the image, but it's definitely different, and again Lenovo have noted improvements to me. It's difficult to say how this will hold up long term without actually using it for a long time. Hopefully the these changes have addressed the issue. Check out this video by Code Husky if you want more information on the hinge. In any case, there wasn't too much flex to the screen owing to the metal lid, and keyboard flex wasn't too bad either while pushing down hard, definitely not noticeable at all during normal use. The bottom panel is aluminum and clean, just air intake vents towards the back, and we can see there's nothing obstructing it. That whole rectangle section at the back is air holes. Getting inside requires removing 10 Phillips head screws, and the four down the front are shorter than the rest. Opening was easy using the tools linked in the description. Unlike the ASUS SCAR 15, the light bar is part of the main chassis so you don't have to worry about ribbon cables connecting to the bottom panel. Inside the storage, Wi-Fi and memory are covered by metal plates. The ones on the sides have three Phillips head screws while the memory one just pries off. We've got the battery down the front, two M.2 storage slots above on both left and right, two memory slots in the center, and Wi-Fi 6 card to the right of that. Both of the metal plates over the M.2 slots have thermal pads too. The speakers are underneath down the front on the left and right sides. They definitely sound above average for a gaming laptop with some bass, and they're still clear enough at full volume. The latency mod results were looking decent as well. The Legion 7 has a 4 cell 80 watt hour battery. I've tested it with all RGB lighting off, background apps disabled, and screen set to 50% brightness. As the Vantage software lets us enable or disable the iGPU, aka Optimus, aka hybrid mode, I've tested both configurations. Now in last year's model, I mentioned that the Corsair software resulted in heavy battery drain. And unfortunately that's still the case with this new model too. It's not just IQ alone though, closing that doesn't change anything. You need to also stop the Corsair service in Windows. But I found that needed to be running in order to use IQ and actually modify the RGB lighting. With the Corsair service running, the laptop is pulling about 50 watts of power from the wall while just sitting there doing nothing. But then when I close IQ and stop the Corsair service, it's using about 15 watts, so a pretty significant drop. I've provided these details from Lenovo and I'm waiting to see what they come back with. From what I've heard so far though, they don't think that this should be happening. Interestingly, the battery was actually lasting longer with Optimus disabled and only using the Nvidia graphics compared to Optimus enabled with the Corsair software running. A clear bug given the Corsair software was still active with Optimus off in this test. Stopping the Corsair software lasted for much longer and is giving me about what we'd expect to see, and then battery life could be further improved by changing the screen's refresh rate down to 60Hz. Unlike ASUS models, the Legion 7 doesn't swap to 60Hz automatically when you unplug from wall power. It stays at 165Hz which you probably don't need on battery, but the Legion 7 does at least have this helpful shortcut to quickly change and save power which is why I've also tested it. For the purposes of comparing against 
against others though, I use the default values rather than manual changes. So 165Hz screen in the case of the Legion 7. It's not doing too bad, but there are definitely other laptops with smaller batteries lasting for longer. You can also enable conservation mode through the Vantage software, which keeps the battery at a 55-60% to maximum charge to help improve battery lifespan. Some other notes about the battery. When on battery power like right now, you can't use the highest performance mode, it needs to be plugged into wall power for that. And by default when you run it on the lowest quiet mode on battery power, all of the RGB lighting will turn off. But you can turn it back on like I've done here if you prefer that sweet sweet glow at the expensive runtime. It's also got flip to boot. This wasn't on by default, but it makes the laptop power on when you open the lid. Let's check out thermals next. Lenovo have told me that all Ryzen based Legion 7s globally will ship using vapor chamber coolers. From what I heard with last generation, that was only the case with higher spec configurations. Lenovo have also confirmed that liquid metal is not used with the Legion 7, despite the original CES announcement in January mentioning this. I asked why they're not using liquid metal, as other companies like ASUS are doing that on their Ryzen laptops. Basically, the reason were a combination of it not holding up very well long term, leading to diminishing returns over time, and it being easier for most customers to replace standard paste. If they were doing liquid metal, it would be automated at a factory, so any on-site support solutions that require removing the vapour chamber would instead result in the laptop needing to get sent to a service centre to have the liquid metal reapplied, and that takes more time and results in a poor customer experience compared to an on-the-spot fix. They also noted the entire vapour chamber and fans are one whole assembly, which results in direct airflow with far less leakage compared to other laptops that have gaps between the heatsinks and the fans. As you can see, pretty much everything is covered by the cooler, including VRM, and some air is brought in through the keyboard area. There appear to be some vents above it. The Vantage software lets us change between different performance profiles, which from lowest to highest to quiet, balance, and performance. Balance mode also has a checkbox we can select to automatically tune the system, so I've tested that too. You can quickly swap performance modes with the function and Q shortcut, and the color of the power button changes to show you the current mode, a simple feature I wish all laptops had. Unfortunately, there's still no way of adjusting fan speed. Lenovo told me that they don't want to expose the end user to things like specific RPM controls, as that might be confusing if you don't know what you're doing. However, I really want to see the shortcut to simply set the fans to max speed come back. That was a thing last generation, and I can't really see the argument to not having that when you just press it if you want it. If you don't want max fans, then don't press the shortcut. I don't know, better to have it than not in my opinion. But let me know what you think, maybe they'll add it back in. Anyway, let's get into those thermal results. The idle results down the bottom were cooler compared to most others. I've run stress tests with both the CPU and GPU loaded up to represent a worst case, as well as playing an actual game. The GPU, represented by the green bars, was never hitting thermal throttling, despite being a full-powered laptop 3080. The CPU wasn't doing too bad either. Most Ryzen laptops seem to cap out at around 95 degrees Celsius, and although we're close to that in balance and performance modes, using the cooling pad, linked below in the description, was able to help out. These are the clock speeds for the same tests just shown. Over 4 GHz on all 8 cores in the stress test is a great result. Quiet mode was wasn't too much lower in the stress test, but it was far lower comparatively when actually running this specific game. The game was still playable, but definitely not as smooth. Granted, Watch Dogs 2 is fairly CPU heavy. A GPU bound game may do better. We can see this when looking at the power limits. The CPU was running at under 10 watts in the game with quiet mode for some reason, despite the stress test constantly sitting at 25 watts. In balance mode, the CPU seems to boost to 45 watts, but the GPU was capped at 115 watts. However, with the auto tune on, the GPU was able to go up to its full 150 watt limit, which is why it also got hotter. The GPU power in this particular game was a bit lower, but I think this is more to do with the game I'm testing with. Regardless, it's not running at 115 watts as others have said. Granted, it could vary based on workload. Here's how an actual game performs with these different modes in use. Performance mode was doing the same as balance mode with the tune box checked. Otherwise, even quiet mode is still able to hit above 60 FPS at max settings in this one. This test is more GPU heavy, so lower processor power limits in quiet mode likely matter less. Here's how the different modes perform in Cinebench R23. There's not too much difference in multi-core results. Honestly, above 10,000 for the lowest mode is still great. Granted, the single core performance is capped heavily there. The Legion 7 has broken the record out of all laptops I've tested with this newer version of Cinebench, at least in multi-core. Though the difference in single core is small compared to the other Ryzen 9 laptops tested. Some performance is lost when running on battery power. However,
However, it's still running quite well relative to the same selection of laptops. The keyboard was in the low 30s when idling, normal stuff when compared to others and cool to the touch. With the stress tests, it rises to the low 40s in the center and was only a little warm feeling in the middle. Balance mode was warmer, getting close to 50. I wouldn't say it's hot or at all uncomfortable though. The exterior is cooler with the auto-tune setting enabled, but as you'll hear next, the fans are louder too. Performance mode is similar, just a warm keyboard. Right off the back is uncomfortable, but you don't need to touch there. Let's have a listen to fan noise. The fan was still audible when idling, though it's quiet and it's louder with the stress test running as you'd expect. Balance mode wasn't much different, that is until you enable the auto tune, where it's basically maxed out and the same as the higher performance mode. The total sound level actually lowers with the cooling pad. Because we can't change the fan speed, the system is now cooler, so the fans slow down as a result. Now let's find out how well this top end configuration of Lenovo Legion 7 gaming laptop performs in games and compares against other laptops. I've run these tests at 1080p as that's just what I've got data for for the purpose purposes of comparing. I've tested Battlefield 5 in campaign mode at ultra settings, and the Legion 7 is highlighted in red. The results are very impressive. This is the second highest score I've ever seen from any gaming laptop in this game, at least in terms of average FPS, though the 1% low is still definitely up there too. Keep in mind this is basically the top end spec of the Legion 7, but still the results are promising compared to other 3080 laptops I've tested, so I'd expect the lead to translate down to the 3070 or 3060 models too when compared to others with those GPUs. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was tested with the game's benchmark tool with the highest setting preset, and the Legion 7 moves down just one position here and is only a few frames behind a larger 17 inch laptop with the same CPU and GPU. Regardless, it is still one of the best results I've ever recorded from any gaming laptop thanks to the combination of high end specs, high power limits, and the ability to disable Optimus. Far Cry 5 was also tested with the game's benchmark tool at max settings. The Legion 7 moves down a bit further here. This test generally depends more on the processor. However, at the same time, it looks like it might also favor Intel systems given those take up the top 5 spots. In any case, the Legion 7 is only just slightly behind the same spec but larger Prometheus 17. Setting the laptop to 1080p in Windows adds black bars above and below, but with pretty much all games running at 1080p, it just stretches the game out a bit to fill the whole screen. It depends on the game and if it supports setting aspect ratio. When stretched out I could notice it, but it depends on the game. You could also run regular 1440p with black bars too. I've also tested the Legion 7 in 13 different games like Cyberpunk and Red Dead Redemption 2 at the native 16x10 resolutions. I've done 1920x1200 and 2560x1600. So check out this video if you want to get an idea of how well the Legion 7 actually performs with its native resolution. Now for the benchmarking tools. I've tested Heaven, Valley, and Superposition from Unigen, as well as Firestrike, Time Spy and Port Royal from 3D Mark. Just pause the video if you want a detailed look at these results. Adobe Premiere was tested with the Puget Systems benchmark. The results from the Legion 7 are now the best I've ever seen from any laptop in this test. It's ahead of other laptops with the same CPU and GPU like the Asus Scar 15. Adobe Photoshop generally depends more on processor performance, and the Ryzen 9 5900HX is doing great here too, though the same processor in the Clevo and Tongfang units was doing a little better here. DaVinci Resolve is more GPU heavy, and the high wattage RTX 3080 is doing well here, though interestingly slightly behind a 3070 just above it, but regardless it's only a small difference at this point. I've also tested SpecViewPerf which tests out various professional 3D workloads. The drive speed for the 1TB NVMe M.2 SSD was doing well for both reads and writes, and you could always install a second one if you want. The BIOS has more options than your average laptop. Granted, many of the options are also prevented through the Vantage software, but there are also some extras like enabling GPU overclocking. From what I can tell, this just gives you the option of applying an overclock in software like MSI Afterburner. Otherwise, we can apply a GPU overclock in the BIOS itself. There's an option for CPU overclocking, but I've been advised that this doesn't currently do anything. It would be nice if we got power limit control with AMD's HX series processors, but that's pure speculation on my part. I booted an Ubuntu 20 Live CD to test Linux support. Out of the box, Wi-Fi, keyboard, touchpad, and camera work, but the speakers and screen brightness didn't, so you'd probably need to install some extras or updates. Keyboard RGB lighting can still be adjusted as the base effects are baked into firmware and don't need software. Now let's discuss pricing. This will change over time, so check out the links in the description below if you want to see how much it currently goes for. At 
the time of making this video, the Legion 7 isn't available in most regions yet. I've only seen pricing data on the Singapore site so far. Given I've got the higher spec Ryzen 9 and RTX 3080 configuration, I would expect this one to be on the more expensive side. But there are also Ryzen 7 and 3060 and 3070 options as well. Alright, so with all of that in mind, let's summarize both the good and the bad things about the Legion 7 and help you decide if it's a laptop worth considering. Overall, I think yeah, the Legion 7 is a pretty great gaming laptop. The changes improve almost every issue with last year's model, such as the touchpad, hinges, and keyboard lighting on boot. The exception is the battery drain, which seems to be a result of the Corsair software. But at least that's an easy fix by disabling it, which resulted in fairly good battery life. Granted, keeping it disabled does mean that you can't customize the RGB, but hey, if you're satisfied with the default firmware effects, maybe that's fine. Normally at this point, I'd say something like, hopefully a future update will fix this problem. But given this problem first appeared with the Legion 7i last year when I first reviewed it over 8 months ago now, I'm not confident in assuming that. But like I said earlier, Lenovo do at least seem to agree that this doesn't seem like normal behavior. So we'll just have to keep an eye on the situation. Unfortunately, this review unit has to get sent back eventually, so unless that's fixed in the near future, it might not be something I can personally test. If I do get any updates, I'll leave an update pinned in the comments below. Performance was otherwise excellent. The processor was doing well compared to other 5900HX laptops I've tested, and the option of disabling Optimus gives us a speed boost in games. The bright 16-inch panel with high refresh rate and decent response time has both FreeSync and G-Sync, which is a nice bonus. Most laptops only have one or the other. Build quality is decent, there's a RGB for days with plenty of customization, and there's just not too much else for me to complain about except that battery drain issue. Let me know if you think I should compare the Legion 7 against the Legion 5 Pro down in the comments. And if you're new then make sure you get subscribed for the upcoming full review on the Legion 5 Pro. Come and join us in Discord and get behind the scenes videos by supporting the channel on Patreon. Oh, this is getting awkward running out of hands. And check out this one if you want to see how well the Legion 7 actually performs in different games at its native resolution. So I'll see you over in that one next.